Dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. dun Hush, little dun, baby, dun. don't say a word. Dun's gonna dun, buy dun, you a mockingbird. Dun, dun, dun. And dun, if that dun, mockingbird dun, don't sing, dun, dun, dun. Mother's dun, gonna dun, buy dun, you a diamond ring. Dun, dun, dun. If that diamond ring turns brass Mom's gonna buy you looking glass And if that looking glass gets broke Mama's gonna buy you a Billy Gold That was alright, huh? That was great! <laughs> that was as it is doing public domain. I love that. So welcome to my 10th year Vans Warp Tour interviews. Uh, you know, Warp Tour is a great place to get new fans. Uh, would you guys rather have radio airplay or Spotify stream success? Ooh. Uh, I love being played on the radio, but I think you can more instantly see, like, how you're doing effectively with Spotify streams. Um, it's really you don't really know how many people listen to you, even if the radio does play it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's all very impersonal radio. I don't know. Like, with, with Spotify, you know who's listening. Um, you know there are people there. Um, and I think with this genre and this world, it's very much about having, like, cult followings, like, people that really care. Um, so for that reason, I'd probably pick Spotify streams. As cool as the uh, the whole radio thing is, I, I, I don't know. It's more important to me, but we know that, like, the fans are there, I guess. What role do you see music streaming having in 2018 and beyond? I mean, record sales are not are no longer the pinnacle. I think there's definitely been a like a decline in people listening to like a full record, um, and that's something we wanted to like try and change with this record. We definitely wanted to make a like start to finish record um, to kind of battle a bit against that like playlisting culture where people only listen to singles and people some people only drop singles now and just could do single then a single like and abandoning or, yeah, abandoning or, or if, albums altogether. or if you release a record you've released half, half the songs already and there's no this there's this no kind of like christmas day experience where it's like wow like i've been wanting to hear this record for so long that was something we were really conscious of um but yeah no i think you're right it uh, you know the the album becomes very fragmented it was very important with this being a concept record or just you know our most ambitious record in general that, that it was about the album it wasn't about the singles necessarily um and i think you're right yeah the streaming has kind of changed that that culture and that format quite a lot what role do you see, or what role do first album, first week rather, album sales have when you're kind of um, starting an album cycle? Practical or not, I mean, you know, they're, they're still very important within the industry. Um, they kind of set the trajectory for the for your record cycle. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really all about numbers. They don't mean that your band is growing or um, shrinking in any way. Um, I don't really know. If, if I'm honest, I don't know if they're as important as they're kind of given the, the kind of magnitude they have. But, um, you know, we're out here hustling. Yeah, so We're still trying to get good first week numbers. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's still a goal then? Yeah. And yeah. what role do you see music videos having when there's no longer a channel that plays them? Or maybe there will be again with everything else being thrown back. <laughs> I mean, on this cycle, I feel like that's something we've definitely got right and we've seen more views than we've ever seen, really, uh, in such a short space of time. Um, and I think for a while, music videos kind of became quite standard, and we, we fell into that trap. You know, you just do like a standard performance and there'd be some kind of loose narrative that really had nothing to do with the song going on. Um, and we did a fa our fair share of those. And uh, I think if you do a music video that is its own kind of piece, has its own points to make, um, then, I think it's shown to us that, that there is a market for that. And you know, being a musician is so glamorous, especially Warp Tour. Is it? <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't say that I'd with a straight face. <laughs> um, what was your first job, either in high school or, or sort of, you know, b before the music? What, what did you do as a, as a side job? I guess technically babysitting um, or teaching guitar. It would have been babysitting first. Um, but my first like real like retail job was I worked at Lush, um, and I thought that was pretty cool. I actually really liked that job. Yeah, my my first job that wasn't working for my parents was I worked in like a coffee shop, like a UK rival to to Starbucks, um, two doors down from where you worked. Yeah. So. 
So here on Warped, how do you go about choosing your set list? You've got a very short amount of time to kind of pack everything in. Yeah, we're only playing six songs out here. It's crazy. So we, we, um, we wanted to, we're playing two off the new record. Um, we're playing one off the first record, and then I think we're playing kind of the, the hits and the darker numbers off of OK is how we kind of looked at it. It was kind of finding this middle ground that we were going to enjoy, that the fans were going to enjoy, um, that was really just going to make the most of the very little time you have to, to impress uh, the people who know you, the people who don't out here on Warped. Is there anything you guys do right before going on stage or right after stage? Any rituals that you always make sure you do? I say the name of where we're playing over and over so I don't forget it or trip up over it. Um, That's really good. <laughs> yeah, because if, if I don't actually know for sure, I just won't say it at all. I'll be like, hello, you guys out there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I make sure I know where I am each day. There's an episode of, I think it's The Simpsons, where I think Spinal Tap is playing and he's got on the back of his guitar, like, the names would be a little uh, cheat yeah. sheet. So yeah, that's, yeah. I think that's a good strategy as well. Um, this being the last full-length tour of Warped, uh, what was your first memory uh, for Warped Tour, either as a performer or as a fan? Yeah. Uh, for me, from the UK, my first memory of it was I bought like a, a copy of Kerrang! magazine. It was like a Warped Tour edition. I think it had like Travis Barker and uh, The Offspring on the front. Um, and that I remember reading that going, oh, this looks cool. Um, I think that, that was my first introduction to Fall Out Boy. There was like some poster in there of them in a swimming pool on Warp Tour. Um, and then I was like, that looks like fun. I'd, I'd like to be in a band and do stuff like that. And here so I you am. just did. Here I am on the last one. You actually went to Warp Tour. A couple a of times, two, maybe three times in uh, Minneapolis. Um, they've since moved it to uh, a park, which is a lot cooler. It used to be on like the, the Metrodome uh, parking lot, just asphalt. It was boiling. It was very, very, very uh, brutal. Um, but I, I really loved it. I thought it was so cool, and I used to think it was just this, it was so enormous, and every, everything was so inaccessible, and now just kind of being on the other side, it's like, it's so funny, just kind of like going to a signing, just how kind of casual it all is and stuff, but it was like such a big deal, and I'm, I'm sure it still is in, in a lot of ways, but, um, yeah, I guess it's, it's, it's just still got that magic. I mean, like, Warped Tour is just kind of infamous. It's going to, like, go down in alternative music history, so it's cool to have been a part of it, like, even just a small part of it. Um, yeah, we're pretty lucky, I guess. What's up next for you guys after Warp Tour? Are you allowed to talk about it this year? Because in previous years, like that's like that's like the cardinal rule is thou shalt not talk about the fall. Are you allowed hey, this year? We 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 are actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we, we yeah because we're not doing U.S. in the fall, so right. we're able to talk about our yeah. fall plans because they're in the U.K. and Europe. Yeah. So we're we're starting our like headline Great Depression tour. Yeah. Um, kicking off in Belgium, I believe, and we're doing our biggest ever headline shows in the U.K. Uh, London's ridiculously big for us i'm very nervous but um yeah and then after that i'm sure we'll be heading back to america at That's some point team. and we put a record out and we put a record out oh, august uh, 10th. August, five days after warp tour finishes there you go there we go that's what i was looking for there we go exactly. <laughs> stay tuned Get that plug in <laughs> stay tuned for much more from as it is this is jackie thanks to chorus fm and in the key of change